I'm here today with Marion Boswell, landscape architect. And I'm really glad to be in this amazing garden that she designed. And its scale and beauty really takes you in. However, we are here today to talk about the principles and approach that sit in the heart of this garden. So Marion, what does sustainable design mean to you? Gosh, that's a big question. <laughs> so uh, I think it starts, it starts with the land. It starts with understanding what this land would be if we weren't here. And the same for a small garden or for, for a large garden. So here we look at the, the lay of the land, the soil, it used to be all about water here. People first settled here for water. Mm -hmm. So we're working with those elements to see what we can build into a beautiful garden that's good for biodiversity, good for humans, of course. I mean, we are part of the whole uh, biome, but also how it can be long lasting with, without doing harm. I think doing no harm is the whole, the, the key thing. And I think that's really interesting, you know, that, that approach of thinking of it as an ecosystem, because I know sometimes when I would start on designs, when I first kind of was designing it, and it was all all about trying to get down shapes and colours and things but actually it's more than that isn't it it's more than just sort of what it looks like yeah I like to think of it you know there's that lovely Scott Fitzgerald quote um, she was beautiful but not like the girls in the magazines <laughs> I like to think that the garden's beautiful from sort of below the skin not just for from how it looks on the, on the outside How do you work with soil here? What do you do in terms of um, within your design? Soil is incredibly important to lock up carbon and it's the fungus and everything that lives inside the soil which is so important. So looking after its structure and allowing all those things to breathe, really important. So we feed the soil and we keep it covered. So our planting, you'll see, is in lots of layers. So there's always ground cover, then something coming up through, then some shrubs for shade and then the tree layer. So you've always got these different layers that work together and look after the soil because the soil is really the key to the garden. No, that is so true. And I think, you know, one of the things I know is, you know, being peat free and I'm assuming, you know, that this, this site is peat free, you know, do, do, do you get a lot of um, people asking you to use peat in, in gardens? Not at all. I mean, I don't, th I don't think people know that, that, they're, that they would want to use peat. It's more that the question that, that it's been used historically and therefore it's coming through our system. So we make sure that the soil that we, that we have is composted, we use the leaf mulch and it's mulched. So it's looked after. So you don't, yeah, you don't, certainly don't need to use peat. No, it's really good to hear that because I know that there's, you know, a lot of people. They, I think they want to go to be being peat free, but they're concerned. Will their plants grow? And I mean, I'm looking around here and I can see things coming up everywhere. Now let's let's just talk about water for a minute. Obviously, I'm looking out at this gorgeous uh, pond. So I mean, I'd, I'd love to hear how you've managed the water here. Yeah. So we gather everything from the roofs. That's the first thing. It's free water. Let's use it. <laughs> Manna from heaven. Uh, we use water butts. We use down pipes. And then here we have a whole underground system of drainage which leads down to this pond. So in a smaller garden, you could have a rain garden, which is a lovely thing. Mm -hmm. So the the water comes down the drains and then would feed into a little pool which is what I, I think of as a sometimes pond so it <laughs> fills up and then it, it enters and, that, and then it empties and that's a lovely way of, of working with water the sort of old Victorian bedding plants which were grown with a lot of water in the greenhouse and then put in and then taken out and put in and take I mean that takes a lot of water so we would use mostly perennials Mulching also helps yeah. uh, reduce water and that can be mulching with a compost or it could be a gravel or it could be a wood chip and that also helps prevent the evaporation so that you need less water in the garden. I can see how important the planting is in this garden. Marion talks about the many layers that are important within this space, the ground cover, perennials coming through and some of the main shrubs that offer shade. But importantly, if you listen closely, you'll hear the bees and all of that biodiversity. In a space like this, I can see how Marion has looked to the landscape for a lot of the influence within this garden, the choice of plants and trees and some of the shapes and undulations that she's followed. But you don't have to have a big garden to take inspiration from the environment that you live in. We can just go for a walk around our local area, see what trees are growing well, see what native species there are, and that can all come back into our garden. So it means that the ecology within our space is talking to the ecology outside of our space. What 
has been apparent talking to Marion today is that sustainable design starts with the land, really understanding and listening to the environment that we live in, understanding our soil and protecting it and nurturing it, and thinking about the plants, how we can not only give good ground cover, but introduce plants that may also work for biodiversity. So I invite you to go out, relook at your gardens and see how you can bring sustainable design into your life. Thank you.